Good morning. My name is Matt Lohmeyer, and I'm an Air Force Academy graduate, former F-15C fighter pilot, and was a lieutenant colonel and commander in the Space Force. In 2021, I was fired from my command for writing a book trying to reverse the trend of the overt politicization of the uniformed services. Specifically, I criticized the military's diversity, equity, and inclusion trainings, which at my own base were illegally occurring despite an executive order from the Commander-in-Chief. The diversity, equity, and inclusion industry is steeped in critical race theory and is rooted in anti-American Marxist ideology. I watched DEI trainings divide our troops ideologically and in some cases sow the seeds of animosity toward the very country they had sworn an oath to defend. Before writing that book, I submitted a formal written complaint to the Space Force Inspector General's office detailing that such violations were occurring, including illegal race-based discrimination, but my complaint was never investigated and was later dismissed by then Lieutenant General Stephen Whiting, whom the Senate just confirmed for his fourth star. After two months, I received a written dismissal of my complaint from General Whiting. Personally, I have always advocated for a non-political military work environment. Today I'm here to testify about the ongoing Marxist-inspired efforts to subvert and weaken our military and broader American society. We often refer to these efforts as wokeism, but it is also a culture war. Yet even in this committee, there are differing views about whether there is such a thing as a culture war underway. Some members of this committee have been outspoken critics of DEI initiatives to include CRT, drag shows on military bases, trans activism, LGBTQ pride celebrations, and woke military recruiting videos, all things that are visible components of an ongoing culture war. Ranking member Garcia, as he just mentioned, on the other hand, and asserted as recently as two weeks ago, says that the culture wars are quote unquote phony and are merely a political talking point of Republicans. It's nothing if not incredible for a member of this subcommittee to assert that culture wars are phony while another member who's not present at the moment of this committee is a member of the so-called progressive squad, was herself a Black Lives Matter organizer and activist, an organization whose publicly avowed ideology is Marxism and whose activist ambition is social and cultural revolution. Service members who wear the uniform of their country do not want to see these things in the military workplace. They don't want to see them at their bases. In most cases, this is true regardless of their race or their political worldview. Despite that reality, Pentagon officials requested $140 million to expand woke diversity initiatives in fiscal year 2024, double what it's been the previous two years. There are few things taxpayers such as myself feel less essential to the mission of the United States military than expanding diversity mandates and indoctrination. And now an important point. Such aggressively opposed ideological worldviews competing for institutionalization through policy epitomizes and formalizes what is properly termed a culture war. The fact that these debates now infect the U.S. military workplace is an offense to people like me who love their country and all people regardless of their race, gender, sexual preference, or background.